Right, I want us to move on to this next section called simultaneous equations. Uh, we'll use the March 2009 question 1.2 exam paper as our guide. Remember here you're given two unknowns. You've got to solve it simultaneously. What do we do? What do we, how do we go about solving these problems? Remember this is the biggest section in algebra. It has big as maths. For example, this one was about seven marks in that exam. So these are huge marks. Remember the other ones that we were doing we were between three, four marks. Now we are moving into bigger marks, which is about seven marks. What do we do first? You name those equations. Call the first one equation one. Call the second one equation two. When I write this, I mean I refer to equation one. When I write this, I refer to equation two. The next step, you, you, you're trying to to get rid of one, it's either you get rid of x or you get rid of, of y there. In other words, you create the third equation anywhere between these two. I would suggest you go to the simpler equation. This one looks complicated, therefore we use the first one to create the third equation. What are we actually doing? We're trying to get rid of one variable there between x and y. You check which one is easier to get rid of. X can be written as something. If I make 3y three, three the subject, I will still have to divide by 3. So it is easier to make x the subject. Let's do this thing. We're going to have x is equals to, take 3y that side, it will be positive 3y, it will find y that side which is positive. This is our third equation. Piece of cake. Now we've got the equation. Look at the third equation. It has x is equal to something. That's what we wanted or y is equal to something. It was easier to make x the subject of the formula there. Now remember that where did we get this equation from? We got it from equation one. Now we're going to substitute this in the equation that we have not touched yet, which is the second equation. Let's tell the examiner what we're doing now. We're going to substitute equation three, which is this one, into equation 2, which we have not used. This becomes important. We are going to substitute, in, uh, in other words, wherever there is x, we are going to push in 3y plus 1. In this one, in equation 2. Let's look at equation 2. Let's look at our equation 2. Let's take it down. It is x squared minus 2xy plus 9y squared is equal to 17. This is our equation 2. What are we going to do now? We are going to substitute equation 3 into equation 2. What is equation 3 saying? Equation 3 is saying, whenever I see x, I must put 3y plus 1. Do we have equation, something called x here? Yes, we do have x. I see x here. So I'm going to take this out and push in 3y plus 1. I see x again here, put that 3y plus 1 here. Then no longer x is. Then I move on. And remember one thing and one thing only, these are quadratics, question one, quadratics, quadratics. We're trying to put everything into the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. On the other side of the equal sign, I must have zero. I still have 17. I've got to move it, transpose it to the other side. Let's do this thing. Let us substitute. Let's respect this one. Where there's x, we're going to push in there. Ah, this is x. We push in 3y plus one. This is my x. But how is this x in the squared? Minus. You can write 2 and write 3y minus uh, plus 1, then write y. But I prefer to put this together, which is 2y. Then I put my x, which is 3y plus 1. Right? Uh, the next one will be plus 9y squared. Take 17 this side, it's minus 17 equal to 0. Yes, we've got 0 now on the right hand side, which is good. We've got zero on the other side. Let's work it out. Let's continue with our problem. Let's multiply here. Let us square a binomial, two times squaring a binomial, which is your grade eight, grade nine. Let's work it out here. If I've got x plus h, all squared, I don't have to go and open two sets of bracket and say x plus h into x plus h, as if I'm still doing grade eight. I want us to go straight into the solution. Square a binomial by inspection. We say x times x, x squared, x times h, xh, double that, it's going to be 2xh, then h times h, 
to give us h squared. That's how you go about squaring a dynamic. If I've got x plus 2 all squared, how do I do it? I say x times x, x squared, x times 2, 2x, double that, 4x, then 2 times 2, it's 4. It's exactly what we do here. Let's do it. 3y times 3y, it will give us 9y squared. 3y times 1, it will give us 3y. Double that, it will give us 6y. Then 1 times 1, it will give us 1 squared, which is 1 in this particular case. We're done with this one. We're moving into this other set. 2y times 3y, this will give us minus 2y times positive 3y, it will give us a minus 2 times 3, it's 6, y times y, it's y squared. So it's minus 6y squared. Then minus 2y times positive 1, it will give us minus uh, 2y. Remember 1 is an identity element for, for multiplication, it will give us the same thing. Plus 9y squared minus 17 is equal to 0. 0. Right, let's simplify this. Let's clean it up. Remember, let's start with the one with squares. This is y squared. This is another y squared. Do we have another one? Yes, we do have another y squared. There are three all together. Let's start with them. 9y squared and 9y squared. How much all together? 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 minus 6y squared. What are we left with? 18 minus 6 is 12. So we're left with 12y squared. Right, let's move on to y's now. I no longer look where I've underlined. I look at L somewhere else. Let me underline on top now. This is y, there are six. Any other y's? These are the other ones. Any other y's? No y's. So these are six. We've got all y about six. Six is about two. Six is about four. We've left with four y. Now I'm looking at those that are not ticked, either on top or the bottom. This is what we have. Uh, this is 1. This, done, done, done. This is another one. Minus 17 plus 1, it will give us minus 16. What do we have on the other side? We've got 0. Ah, now it is the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. It is in the form that we want. Remember question one or algebra is all about quadratics, quadratics, quadratics. What do we do when we're in that stage? We go back to the first step, factorization. What is the first thing we do when we factorize? When we factorize, we've got to look for a common factor. You don't calculate it, you don't pray about it, you don't think about it, you just open your eyes and look for a common factor. We've got this 12, 4, and 16. What is the common factor there? In this particular case, it is 4. So we can divide everything by 4. Let's do it. If you divide 12 by 4, it's 4, 8, 12. So this is 3y, 3y squared. Plus, divide this by 4, it's y. Divide this by 4, it is 4. Equal to 0. Ah, now it is simpler. Now I can factorize. Let's do our factorization. You open two sets of brackets. Remember, from here, you avoid using a quadratic formula because you'll find factors. We've got 3y here uh, and y. Let's look at the other one. It's either we use 2 and 2 or we use 4 and 1. Let's try, let's, let's call trial and error. Let's try uh, 4 and 1. If I put 4 here, I will get 4y oh, and 3y. So this will work out, 4 and 1. So if I say 3 times y, it will be 3y squared. 3 times 1, it will be 3y. Then 4 times y, it will be 4y. Right, that's what we have. We want to get this middle term, which is 1. How do I get positive, positive 1 out of these two terms? Let's look at it. Uh, 3y, uh, this has to be positive. This must be positive for me to get y, positive y, which is our middle term. Let's work it out. Uh, we set 3 times y, 3y, 3 times 1, 3 times y, 3y. How should 3y be? It must be negative. Therefore, this is negative. For me to get positive, negative there, definitely this must be positive. Because negative times negative, give positive times negative, will give me that positive. Will, will give me that negative. Then eventually, y will then be equal to, take for that side, it is minus 
4 over 3 or y is equals to 1, positive 1 in this particular case. Now we do have values of y. Remember that we're solving for both x and y. Now we know that there are two possible values of y, which is minus 4 over 3 or y is equals to 1. Now we need to find the corresponding x values of these two. Let's work them out here. Uh, where do we go about finding these values of y? I suggest that you look at our three equations. When we look at our three equations, which one is easier to find x? Remember we've got y. x minus 3y is equal to that. That, that. This one will be much more important. This one. Because it just x is equal to something. Because we're now looking for x, we do have the values of y. Let's do this thing. We've got x is equal to 3y plus 1, 3y plus 1. How many values of y do we have? We've got two values of y. Therefore, we've got to have two corresponding y values. Or x is equal to 3y plus 1. We take it from the third equation. So it was important that we find the third equation. It makes our lives easier to find the other uh, uh, corresponding x values. Where there is y, where there is y, we push in the value of y. In the second one, where there is y, we are going to push in the value of y. Let's do this thing. So x is equal to 3. What is the first y that we have? It is minus 4 over 3. You push it in here, minus 4 over 3. This is the value of y, then plus 1. Or x is equal to 3 into what is the next the next value of y it is equals to one you push it in here substitute plus one ah let's work it out then x is equals to this divides there once we are left with minus four what is minus four plus one minus four plus one it is minus three or x is equals to what is three times one it is three three plus one it is four these are the values of X. It is important, therefore, Mfunde Makaya, Ugut Uwaz, Ugubala, is solution set here, what you found. Then our solution set in terms of X and Y will be if X was, if X was minus 3, what is the corresponding Y value here? Remember the Y that you substituted here was this to get this one. So the value of Y will be minus 4 over 3. And if x was 4, what was the corresponding y value of it? It is 1. So this is how you go about writing your solution set and solving x and y simultaneously. Let's move on to the next subtopic. Thank you.